Hello, hello, hello. Today is June 14, 2022. Solutions to the isothermal atmosphere problem number 146. Uh, the good news is that about 10-20% of you have it correct. Of course, I gave you directions to watch my lecture 33 because it's all there. And even now, I would strongly refer in everything I do to my lecture 33. I watched my whole lecture 33 for myself. Remember, it was recorded in 1999, which is 23 years ago. There were many things in there <laughs> which I had completely forgotten. But nevertheless, I like the lecture. You can start, as far as the isothermal atmosphere, you can start at 32 minutes into the lecture. But there is nothing wrong with starting earlier. Because I discuss, I discuss earlier things that may also be very useful to you. Things like atomic mass, just to give one example. Neutrons, protons. Okay, so let's start. The idea was then, if we assume that the temperature in our atmosphere doesn't change. You may say, no, well, that's an absurdity, but that's not so bad at all. It's not a bad approximation over the range that we are interested in. In fact, if you check the results that we find against the observations, they agree with only a few percent. Okay. Lecture 33 of 801 start at time 32 minutes. I start here with the ideal gas law. PV equals nRT. P is the pressure in Pascal, V is the volume in cubic meters, N is the number of moles, R is the gas constant, T is the temperature in Kelvin. This is the number of R in joules per coulomb per mole. You can also write it completely identical as capital N KT. Now capital N is not the number of moles, but is the number of molecules that you have, or atom, to atoms, whatever may be the case. So you see here that nr, this little nr, is the same as this capital N times k. k is called the Boltzmann constant. What is a mole? One mole of any gas has a number of molecules or atoms, whatever may be the case, which is Avogadro's number. And this is that number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So you see that NK, capital NK, is the same as lowercase n times R. So that means K is NR divided by N. N is the number of moles. N is the number of molecules or atoms that you may have. R is 8.3. And so K is then the number of 8.3 divided by Avogadro's number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And so K, which is Boltzmann constant, is then this number. I repeat myself, one mole, doesn't matter which gas you take, has so many molecules. So 
So the mass of one mole is Avogadro's number times the mass per molecule or atoms, whatever the case may be. Different gases have different mass. So if you take, for instance, O2, the mass of one mole of O2 must be eight times larger than the mass of one mole helium. Because the atomic number of helium is four, and the atomic number from oxygen is 16, but since you have two atoms in one molecule, it is really 32, and 32 divided by 4 is 8. Using the ideal gas law, you can calculate what the volume is of one mole which has a pressure of one atmosphere, so you specify P, and it has a temperature, room temperature of 293 K. And when you do that, and you apply the gas law, you will find that independent of the mass of the molecules, the volume of one atmosphere, of one mole, is always the same it's about 24 liters. This is not in cubic meters, but it is in liters. So this is, one liter is 1,000 cubic centimeters. The mass of a proton is very close to the mass of a neutron. So the mass of an O2 molecule is 32 times the mass of a proton or the mass of a neutron, which is closely to this. Now we make a big step. Hydrostatic equilibrium means that d pi dy, y is the vertical direction, pressure is the change in the vertical direction, equals minus rho times g, and rho is then the density of the material. If this were liquid, that is not a gas, then rho is pretty much constant because you can't compress liquid to a high degree of accuracy. So if you apply this to a liquid, then rho is constant. Now if you apply it to a gas, rho is not constant. You may now argue, well, in the case of an atmosphere, can we really assume that G is constant? To a high degree of accuracy, yes. Over the distances that we are involved in, the size of the Earth's atmosphere is way much smaller than the radius of the Earth. To so a reasonable approximation, you may assume that G does not change. For this problem, that is acceptable, and the answer you get is very close to observational data. That is the remarkable thing. So, we now apply this to a gas. The density of a gas is, of course, a function of the mass divided by the volume. That is the mass of a molecule divided by the volume. It is the mass, not of, of the molecule, it is the mass of the entire volume that you have, whatever that may be, it doesn't have to be one mole. The total mass inside your volume divided by the volume. The total mass inside your volume is the number of molecules or atoms in your volume times the mass of each, each atom or molecule divided by V. Now I apply the universal gas law, and therefore this is also the same as P divided by KT times M. Now we go back to this equation. The P dy equals minus rho times G. But for rho, we use this number now. The 
could have taken this number, but I picked this number. So you see minus rho times g. So the p over p, because I can break this p downstairs here, and I can take this y upstairs, the p over p is then minus mg divided by kt, mg divided by kt times dy. And now comes something quite interesting. The p over p is dimensionless. They have both the same dimension. So the ratio is dimensionless. So this must also be dimensionless. dy has the dimension of length. That means this must have the dimension of 1 over length. So if we know the mass of the molecules or atoms, whatever may be the case, then this is a number that we can calculate because we know k, we, name, we, we take t, the home temperature, and we take g, as we know it on Earth. And so this can be calculated if I calculate what the mass of an air molecule is. Now an air molecule doesn't exist, of course. 20% of the air molecules are oxygen, that is O2, that has an atomic mass number of 2 times 16, which is 32, and the mass number of nitrogen, which is N2, has an atomic mass number of 2 times 14, which is 28. So there are molecules floating around with an atomic mass number of 28, others with 32. 80% 28, 20% 32. So, we can sort of round it off roughly that the average mass of an air molecule is 29 times the mass of the proton. So now we're almost there. Mg divided by kT using this m we find that this here is 1 over 8,000. I told you already, this must have the dimension 1 over length. And with this mass, I find that it is 1 over 8,000 meters. And I call this 8,000, 8,000. 8,000 is 8 kilometers. Now I'm almost there, I do the integral from P0, which could be the ground if you want that, to P at altitude H. So there is the integral from 0 to H of mg over kT dy. And since this is 1 over H0, it is minus 1 over H0 dy. That is an exponential function. Check your math and work that out. Do the integral. Then you find that P as altitude h is P0, which could be your ground level, times e to the minus mg h over kt. And if you write it this way, it's way more transparent. This is the, the altitude where you are in h0 in Earth, atmosphere, air, is 8,000 meters. H oh, divided by H0 is dimensionless. So you can use the kilometers here, which is 8, as long as you also express small h in kilometers. So if you take Mount Everest, where small h is 8.8 .8 kilometers, and you use for capital H0 9 kilometers, you find that the pressure at Mount Everest is about one-third of P0, and we take P0, the ground level, which is about one atmosphere, so it is about one-third of an atmosphere. I have spent many hours, many days and hours of my life at an optical observatory in, uh, in Chile, 
And that optical observatory was at an altitude of about 2400 meters. And so I can use this equation now to calculate what the pressure there was. And the pressure was three quarters of an atmosphere. If you go 30 kilometers up in the atmosphere, then you find, this is now 30 divided by 8, minus 30 divided by 8, then you get P equals this number, very low, which is only 18 millimeters mercury. The remarkable thing is that as artificial as it may sound to you, to calculate what an isothermal atmosphere would look like, do your homework and check to what extent this model agrees with observations. You'll be surprised. You'll be really surprised. So that also confirms then that to assume that the G doesn't change was not unreasonable. About 20% of you have it correct. And I hope that many of you have spent the time to watch my lecture 33. It's really a terrific lecture. And it's a little bit on the outside of the curriculum of 801, which is Newtonian mechanics. But it tells you how molecules move inside gases as a function of temperature. Things are very non-intuitive, let me tell you. You should really want to watch entire lecture 33. But if you're only interested in doing this problem, go to 32 minutes into the lecture. If you can't do it, don't feel bad. Uh, this could easily be asked at the JEE advanced exam. Probably not at the JEE main exam. And definitely not at any high school exam. But I did ask this question at one of my exams at MIT for freshmen. Have a nice day, we'll be friends anyhow, don't worry about that. That's the strongest conservation law of physics. Stronger is not possible.